Hello and welcome to Social Media for Humans, the podcast that empowers you to do social differently. Your host, Alexis Bushnell, and her guests discuss their experience of social media as business owners, users, and ultimately, humans, with insights and advice to help you find an effective and ethical strategy that works for you. Grab yourself a drink and join the conversation. Hello, hello. I am with wonderful Katie of the Duck Pond. Would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yes. Well, that was that was all the introduction I needed, really. <laughs> but hello, my name's Katie. My pronouns are she, her. Um, and I am, as Alexis said, I am the founder of a membership and community for ethical, sustainable and vegan brands called the Duck Pond. Um, and I also do some other stuff under the heading Little Green Duck as well. But the duck pond's my main thing at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and it is, it is a really lovely place. And when I first, because you launched it quite recently, didn't you? I did, yeah. I launched it in December 2020. So we're still kind of just under six months old. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when I first saw you talk about it, I was like, this is awesome because not just because of the giving a community to sort of sustainable business owners and stuff like that but because of what that provides because it can be really tough and I know that like this is the conversation that happens a lot and there is like how how do I find x thing how do I do this thing in an ethical way how how do I navigate running a business marketing a business being a business as an ethical person how do i do those things in an ethical way so is that what inspired you to create it or was it something else it was it was a combination of that um that has kind of evolved more since we opened because uh, the whole point of it really was to open the duck pond and then mould it to what the members who joined at the beginning and then since actually wanted. Because I didn't want to just start kind of chucking resources and content at people when actually it might not what you, be what you necessarily need. Um, so my initial motivation was I was working with a lot of one-to-one -one clients and they were all mainly coming from LinkedIn and they were mainly people who had a bit more money behind their business, they were a bit more established. Um, and then when I started using Instagram for my business a bit more regularly, I was coming across businesses who were like, I really want you to, I really want to work with you, but I don't have enough money. I really want to work with other people who are working in different areas, but I don't have the budget to bring in experts because it's just me on my own um, selling stuff out of my garage or whatever. Um, so I was just thinking, what, how can I, how can I provide those resources that people need to grow their businesses without it costing them hundreds, thousands of pounds a month? Because um, because as small business owners, we don't have that. Um, so that was the initial motivation. And then since it started, we've had the added complication, challenge, probably a more positive word we could find to use that. But just the, the added thing that in order to run a business that you're saying is sustainable or ethical, you have to be mindful of the way you're putting yourself out there, the way you're marketing yourself, the way you're um, speaking to people. And so it's it's really nice, even for me as a person who runs it, it's much as much of a learning curve for me as it is for everyone else to be able to discuss with other people, well, what do you think about this approach? And um, so, yeah, it's it's evolved, but it's I like the way it's evolving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I have to say, I, I really do too. Because actually, when I spoke to Nancy on the podcast, one of the things we talked about was her, um, the uh, three day sustainability like business challenge that she ran, which you, you took part in, did you not? Yes, I did. Yeah. And I was saying that that sharing of resources and the community that it built, even just in those three days, was so powerful and so mm. useful. And I think it really helped the people who took part shift their business and make it more sustainable even in those three days so having that is really it really is invaluable I think um and like I know am I allowed to talk about what we talk about in the duck pond <laughs> for reason yes of course 
<laughs> so, duck pond. <laughs> what happens in the duck pond stays in the duck pond. Exactly. <laughs> so we recently actually had a discussion about uh, like the ethical side of marketing your business, um, which is very interesting, especially to me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was really interesting to hear so many of the, the questions and the struggles that people come up against because marketing is sort of seen as this big, bad, evil thing that you can't do ethically, that is inherently unethical, unethical, unethical. <laughs> um, and it was really, really interesting. But I think I messaged you afterwards, actually, and I was like, it, it really frustrates me because small businesses and ethical businesses especially, they really need to market themselves. Like, we need you out there. We need people to know about you. We need you to be telling people, I do this. This is how you can work with me. This is why you should support me. And it's those businesses that have the hardest time doing it. So you work with, as you said, like freelancers, very small businesses, and also more established businesses who are working to be sustainable. So you must come up against that a lot. I do, yeah. And I think some people struggle with it more than others. Um, mm -hmm. Some people uh, are more mindful of it than others. And I have become particularly this year, I've become kind of inundated with the noise of lots of, don't want to slag off the coaching world, but lots of online coaches who are peddling the like five, 10 figure months and like shaming you for not doing the way things the way that they should be. And I think as, especially in the last year where we've all just been confined to barracks and doing like not really have anyone to bounce any ideas off in a on a day-to-day -day basis, it's quite difficult to tell the difference between what is the right thing to do ethically, what is the right thing to do according to your own values, because I think everyone's kind of, everyone has a bit of a sliding scale of what, what they feel comfortable doing in terms of promoting themselves. Um, so yeah, it's really difficult and it's not something that I really like to give advice on because A, I'm not an expert and B, I think it's different for every business and every person. Um, but I do think that the world is starting to wake up to all of these kind of shouty, this is what you should be doing, this is what, this is the life you could be living if you work with me kind of things because that has always made me feel a bit uneasy but since I've been talking to people who say well if you want to grow your membership that you need to do this and I'm like well my membership's not going to grow then because I'm not doing that <laughs> and, it, and it is it's like I've I've found a way to make it work and it works for me and I am not employing any of those tactics so it's it is possible to grow a business without being like that um it's just finding the way that works for you I think yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think the, the other thing with, because it is it's different for every business and every individual, and I think the other thing is that context matters. Because one of the big things that a lot of, and I will say the sort of one size fits all approach has snuck into people who are talking about ethical marketing as well, um, which is a little bit frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I see a lot of people saying, like, no, you can't do this, full stop, is um, saying, like, limited spaces or we're about to sell out of whatever. And the reason that's become like a don't do this thing is because so many brands do it and it's not true. Like, yeah. there is unlimited spaces. They're just saying it to get you to buy, to put pressure on you to buy right now. But there are plenty of situations where you, you actually do have limited spaces. If you're running uh, a training program yourself and you only want to have 10 or 15 people in it because then you can give them the one-to-one -one support they need. It's okay to say there are 15 spaces because there are actually 15 spaces. And so I think that makes it much more complicated as well because you're not just able to check off the list and be like, well, okay, can I mark it like this? Can I mark it like that? Tick, tick. No, I'm not going to do that thing because that's bad. Because you also have to run it past like, well, what am I actually selling? What are my own values? Who am I speaking to? You know, it, it does complicate things. 
So how have you found trying to navigate that? Is there anything that's helped you? Um, I think just, I, by the way, I totally agree with you. And I also realised that the Instagram post that I put out last week about ethical marketing kind of implies that this big list of things that I put out are all bad things and I'm having to not having to wanting to write a blog post about it because I've got so much more to say exactly because of the reasons you're saying because there is context like the the list that I put out was um like not don't do it it was more think about how you're using these things um so I've forgotten what your question is but hopefully I'll answer it by what I'm going to talk about how have I navigated it um just just being really intentional about what I'm doing and thinking things through before I just put stuff out there so like if I'm reading my sales page I'm reading it from a kind of from a customer's point of potential customer's point of view but also from my like moral compass point of view as well um and just making sure that everything aligns with how I've been feeling about marketing in general um and yeah, that's it really, just kind of being really mindful about stuff and thinking about how the words I'm using and the the tactics I'm using could impact someone. Um, and is it something that I would feel comfortable buying if I was a, a if I was a buyer of that product or service? Um, and if that ticks the boxes for me, then it ticks the boxes. Um, and I'm sure there's still stuff that I'm doing that is not a hundred percent even on my own moral compass but it will come to me at some point and I'll go oh well I'd still I feel a bit uncomfortable about that, that now and I'll change it so um yeah. yeah it's it's definitely a moving feast it's it's a constant learning curve that's for sure mm. and I think that's really important though is to accept that you're never going to be perfect and mm. that you are going to do things that future you is like oh that that does not sit right but it's not helpful to sit and beat yourself up and tell yourself that you know you are you you are a, a terrible unethical business and you should just close down because you're awful. But you have to just go. Well, I know better now, so I'll change it. Um, and I I think that's something that people get stuck in. Um, and again, when I spoke to Nancy, it was she was saying like people because of a the external shaming of you're doing this you're doing sustainability wrong you're, you know you're doing ethics wrong um I, it then triggers that sort of internal panic that you know you're not gonna you, you, you can't do it right um and you know you're just you're just bad for sort of for doing that thing for not knowing better at the time yeah we can't know everything and i think yeah. this is another, again like the power of those communities is that you are able to bounce ideas off people. You are able to get a broader spectrum of of how it how your idea affects other people, because even if you run it past your own sort of moral code, you might then find that you speak to somebody from a, a totally different walk of life, and they're like, "Well, actually, that would make me feel this way because X, Y, Z," and you're like, yeah. "Well, I didn't think of that because I I have no idea how you how you experience the world." Mm. Um, so I think it's really important to to bring your to bring your ideas to a variety of people um and also to to forgive yourself for not being perfect <laughs> definitely i totally agree and i think actually people also really appreciate seeing there's something really authentic about seeing someone going on that journey themselves as well so like realizing for yourself okay something like there were loads of things I did when I first launched the duck pond that I now would not ever do and every time I've kind of made that change I've spoken to people about it and I've communicated it because I think it's useful for useful for people to see people really appreciate the fact that you're going look I'm not like this is not just my perfect insta world it's like it's a, just a human trying to do their best and making mistakes and then moving on from them and learning from them and if you can learn from them too great um but i'm not telling you you have to learn from them <laughs> um so yeah it's it i think it, it's it's quite nice and it's felt quite freeing for me to just be able to go look i did this back in december 
and I'm not comfortable with it anymore so I'm not going to do it anymore and that if that kind of makes people think oh wow she's actually really trying or oh I do that I might have a look at how I'm doing things just in case it that doesn't sit right with me as well um I think that's it's useful and it's been and as you say just having a community around who are like the word like my or the, the phrase like-minded is banded around a lot but like-minded people people who are thinking the same way as you people who are trying to do good um and being able to bounce ideas off them without them all going oh no that's terrible i'm i'm leaving you immediately <laughs> is really nice yeah <laughs> yeah it really is <laughs> it does make a difference and I, yeah that is something that the sort of non-judgmental side of things is so important um uh, because I mean, like i said before like it is it, it can be really scary to put your idea out there if you are worried that people are rather than offering you like constructive advice and being like well this is why that could be a problem they just go you're an awful person you're not an ethical business at all um it stops you from seeking out advice and i do think that like with social media it happens quite a lot I'm not gonna lie it happens quite a lot um <laughs> you know you do you can put yourself out there and the the uh, the masses can decide that you are an awful person um but i think a lot of the times when that happens it is actually because nobody because that person has not done like you've done and been honest about their journey from the start because i think when that happens a lot of the time it's like th they get found out for doing something or they you know they they do something publicly and and it's not okay mm. and the immediate reaction is like you have told us that you are xyz thing and you have purported to know and be an expert on you know whatever and be totally ethical and moral and what have you and then there's suddenly this bang no this is proof that you're not whereas if like you're doing you share your journey and you're honest about that through the whole thing and you're like hey i've just learned this um like i i discovered um not long after i started talking a lot more about accessibility in social media that actually pdfs can be very inaccessible um, depending on how you design them and a lot of my downloads were in pdf format and i put out a post and i was like just learn this oh no um like i if anybody has any resources i would appreciate them um but also if you didn't know this then now you know and you can do some research as well we can figure it out together um and i think that is what makes the difference is that people can then see that you are not just saying i'm an ethical business owner i care about accessibility i care about diversity whatever you're actually saying like i'm learning along the way like i'm not perfect i'm, I'm figuring it out as we go um and uh, sorry if i mess up yeah exactly and also just i'm one person and it's quite difficult running a business as it is and all these hats that are piling up like you you start with like five hats that you wear and then i think that like every week you get an extra one put on oh, i must think about this now i must, must think about that and my like asana boards get wider and wider with things that i need to think about um and it can be quite overwhelming so i think just being able to share that knowledge with people and just mm -hmm. sharing um like you said like you learn something you go oh my goodness i didn't know this before um did you know this um it's really nice and that's another great thing oh, I sound like i'm doing a massive plug of the duck pond um that's not another great thing about just community in general um the fact that you see people doing something slightly different to you and you think oh that would fit quite well with me as well um like there's there's one person rachel who posts stuff in the duck pond all the time and basically every time she does it i'm like that's brilliant must do it too so she's like really inspiring and i think it like all of these ideas and all of these posts and all of these people doing and learning different things starts a bit of a snowball effect so rather than us all just being our, on our own path we're kind of venturing into other people's paths as well and um and picking up bits of other people's knowledge which is really nice and it's nice when it's a smaller group and not just the whole of social media trying to teach you stuff yes yeah definitely definitely and i do i do think there's so much value in 
picking and choosing the bits that you you add to your business as well. Um, and I, I think it's so tempting, especially early on, I think it's so tempting to just look around at somebody you admire and be like, I'm going to do it that way. Mm. And you basically take their business model and plonk yourself into it and then try and make it fit somehow. And I think as you sort of go through and, and as you're in business longer and you get to know your audience more as well and you get to know yourself more and you start to trust your own business decisions, it gets easier to then look around at other people and be like, yeah, actually, no, I should change this thing that I'm doing for that thing because that would work way better for me. Um, and I do think it's really important to allow yourself to do that. And if, you, if, I, if you're listening and you're at the start of your business journey, please give yourself permission to do that, like, right now. <laughs> do it from the start. Because <laughs> it, it, like, it took me quite a while to get to that point of, of like, I, I can't, this is not sustainable for me to do it this, this way that everybody's doing it. I have to, you know, d divert from that course. Um, so I do think al allowing yourself to be inspired by multiple people and not feel bad for sort of taking those ideas and, and molding them into your own business. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, um, and also equally, not being scared to dismiss things that you know won't work for you like if you just because you think something is an amazing idea for somebody's business it doesn't necessarily mean that it's an amazing idea for yours so like a lot of these things it's quite useful just to kind of like i just write everything down so shove everything on an ideas list and then once in a while scroll through everything and just go i don't know why i wrote that down i'm getting rid of that now and it's quite nice to just kind of yes i think something's a good idea but having the the confidence to dismiss it as unsuitable is quite is quite nice it's quite empowering and um just saying this now makes me realize that i've come quite far because that never used to be me <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, you are you are right because it, it, it can be um it can be tempting to just take on everything mm. uh, especially if you think things are like a good idea whether even even outside of a business setting, you know, if you see a sort of a your your friend is doing like zero waste and the, the way they're doing it is a specific way, and you're like, oh, that's really good, that's really important, I want to do that, mm. and like it doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Like you might have to find a different way. Zero waste might not be for you. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's just the same with anything in life, isn't it? You've got you, everyone's on their own little journey, and you can't just even as much you could just pick one person in the world and try to do everything exactly the same as them and even that wouldn't work if you would because everyone's got a different brain mm. yes it's true it's true so you also work aside from aside from the duck pond you also work with slightly bigger businesses did you always work with sustainable businesses or did you move into that at a later I date I moved into it that so um, very short potted history of me. Um, I worked in the broadcast industry for 15 years. So I was a commercial manager um, managing outside broadcast projects and, um, and budgets and stuff um, and writing big bids for kind of stuff like Wimbledon and other big things so it was quite a different world for me and not particularly eco-friendly although I'm still in contact with some of my old contacts and it's definitely the broadcast industry is definitely changing in terms of how they make productions um, so I did that I was made redundant and started a copywriting business back in 2017 18 I've lost track of what year it is because years keep disappearing um, yeah <laughs> I started the copywriting business and I started working with just contacts from the broadcast industry initially because they were the people who knew me, they knew that I could write, they knew um, what I could deliver and that I was trustworthy. So I started doing that. Then we went travelling. So we sold everything um, we owned, not including our children. And... <laughs> <laughs> it might have made traveling a bit easier so we had a house and everything in it and we went traveling for nine months it was supposed to be a year but we ended up coming back in march 2020 because of covid um, <clears throat> and when i came back i thought right now is the time 
to actually start because writing for a living is really hard going if you don't really care about what you're writing about um and i did like as much as i loved my time in broadcasting it was not the t and it was technical as well it was not my my area of love i did not love it i just knew it um so i thought right okay um i'm gonna specialize now and i just happened to connect um with lars and helena from iluna um right at the beginning and i've been working with them ever since and that was kind of the start and it's just snowballed i just started kind of connecting with people on Instagram and LinkedIn who were more aligned with my own values and my own interests. And, um, and yeah, it's gone from there. Mm. So you, so you found most of your business through social media then? Pretty much all of it. I think, I think I've maybe had, well, I've, I, initially I did. So to begin with, it was all through social media because I had no contacts. It, like we were locked down. I had no contacts in the world. So um, it, social media was the only way that I could, I could mm. connect with these people. Since then, there's been some referrals and stuff like that. So it's not 100% social media driven now, but it's definitely what kickstarted my business and kickstarted mm. the, this whole new network of people that I have because I basically just cleared out my LinkedIn and started following people who were in the industry that I wanted to work with. And that's how it all started. That's a really, really good idea. But like, I think a lot of people, when they, whether they're changing careers or whatever, they will keep, or even if they, when they first start a Facebook page, this drives me to the wall, um, <laughs> they will just invite or keep everybody, everybody they know in their life, absolutely everybody. Um, and one of the things that I, I find myself saying all the time is like, just do not invite absolutely everybody to follow your Facebook page or follow you on Instagram or whatever, because that is, it's going to kill your engagement rate. Like it really is. Um, those people, they're going to support you initially because they love you and they think you're wonderful. Um, but they, they don't care about what you're doing. Most of them, you know, they, they're not interested in the actual content of what you're doing. So after the initial, yay, go you period of time, they are going to stop engaging, but they are still going to be there. And social networks will see that as you are putting out bad content because the people who follow your content don't engage with it. So to clear it out and, and be like, right, I am, I am shifting to this thing. I am going to get rid of everybody who is not interested in that thing is actually a really, really good idea. Was that scary for you? Initially, yeah, because the, the whole my whole career was a massive part of my life. And I kind of felt like I was just wiping out a load of people that I'd worked with really closely for a really long time. But I just realised that if if I'm those people, the people that really matter to me, I'm friends with in real life or on Facebook or on my like they follow me on my personal Instagram page. So it's not like I'm not going to be in contact with them anymore. So I was really, really critical about who is really likely to sounds a bit harsh, but benefit me by being being in my feed. So do I want to see what they're putting out? Do they want to see what I'm putting out? And if the answer is no on either side, then bye bye basically <laughs> Which, <laughs> and, and there were some exceptions there's some people that I think well okay I, I actually really enjoy reading their content even though it's not specifically um, sustainability or ethics related um, and so there's, it, there's a nice mix now but there's some people like a lot of the engineers I used to work with just signed up for LinkedIn profiles because they were told to and they don't use LinkedIn anymore most of them are retired like I don't need I don't need like retired engineers not engaging with my content so but yeah it was, I don't think it was it was it was scary kind of thinking am I going to do this but at the actual doing felt quite nice and it really felt good when I started seeing content in my feed that was relevant um and and you're right about people kind of cheering you on to begin with it doesn't happen so much on LinkedIn because not not many of my friends and family use it but everybody followed me on Instagram to begin with and then everyone kind of tapered off so yeah my advice is unfollow your mum <laughs> I like that advice. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it, and it, it, I do think so many people, have, and a lot of it is that sort of vanity metrics thing, that people are so hung up on the follower numbers um, and like followers, I mean, like especially right now, especially the way social media works right now, followers mean squat. Like really they mean nothing. Reach is so much more important if you're worried about getting in front of other people um so yeah please don't don't get hung up on your follower numbers it's, it's not it's not worth it <laughs> no i totally agree and it's actually that's been quite useful for me because i I've, I've got another instagram account that was just basically i started it because i wanted to post all of my food so i could remember what i cooked um and then meal plan around it and then that turned into a page with a like not a massive following but a bigger following that i've than i've got on my little green duck pond account on instagram um, and it was really useful to see that the page that I am posting on regularly that at the time had like 300 followers, the new one, was getting way more engaging engagement than the one that I was posting my food on because I was more involved in it. I was more engaged myself with it. And so it doesn't matter whether it, like one, one account can have 4,000 followers and like you get 20 people liking it just because they happen to scroll past it and then nothing else or you can have 300 really engaged followers and um mm. and it's that's so much more valuable and so much more rewarding than just have collecting a load of people basically no one mm. wants no yeah. one wants to just be collected <laughs> unless you're a pokemon true <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> i think you made a good point there though is that what makes it a difference, especially on Instagram, what makes the difference is being actively on the platform. If you are, like, you can post seven days a week, but if you're not involved in the conversations on the platform, if you're not talking to the people who are following you, if you're not in your comments and scrolling through hashtags and commenting on there, you are not going to get anywhere meaningful because that is part of it. Like the, the clue is in the name, social media. Yeah. Like that, and as much as a lot of people have forgotten this, it is still the core of a lot, I, I'm not gonna say all platforms, but a lot of platforms. <laughs> so yeah, I, I do. Did you find it difficult to find sustainability sort of ethical businesses on Instagram to engage with? initially oh, really no I found just a few people who I like their content and I like talking to them and then I just didn't really force it I think it just all quite ha happened quite naturally so I would connect with someone like you and then you would share something from someone else and I think oh they're interesting and then you just kind of gradually just it's almost like joining the dots between this community that already because I'm sure it already existed before I turned mm. up it's not like I've come in and ha I've brought everybody together <laughs> but that's what it feels like to me I feel like I've come in and like I've built this community that I love around me and mm. I really like that I like the fact that I haven't just gone out and blindly followed anyone because otherwise it's just too much um and another thing I was going to say something else about social media oh another thing that you're totally right about social media being social but i think that's another real plus point for having a niche or um a an area that you really care about or that you're really interested in because there is nothing worse than going out and engaging with a load of businesses that you're not interested in you're just doing it because you have to do engagement whereas if it comes naturally if you're just going oh I'm really interested in what this person has to say because it is my genuine passion it's so easy to just go and have conversations with people because you actually want to um, whereas I think if I was still in like the broadcast world I would have to be forcing myself to go and engage with people because it's not it's not where my passion lies so yeah niche down everyone <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I know. I totally agree. And I, I do think as well, you don't have to niche down because I do think niching gets a bad rap. I think people are like, A, I don't want to exclude people. B, I can help everybody. Um, <laughs> yeah, but that makes sense. On sort of social media, I you don't have to niche down in 
a specific area of what you do. Like niching down can literally be in talking about things that you're passionate about. Yeah, definitely. And following people who are also passionate about those things. It doesn't, you don't have to say, like if you're a coach, you don't have to say, I am a coach for these specific people in this specific industry with these problems. Yeah, It can be, I am a coach who cares about sustainability. I am a coach who cares about mental health and the overlap mm -hmm. of coaching and therapy. I am a coach who, like, it doesn't have to be something that feels natural, I guess, to, that you would put on your LinkedIn profile, I guess. Like, it doesn't have to be, I am a blank, blank, blank coach yeah. or whatever. You can niche down literally just by pulling parts of yourself to the mm. fore that you are happy to share and talk about and that you're really interested in because that is going to open you up to those communities and get you involved in those communities. And inevitably, there are going to be people who are interested in whatever it is that you do in those communities because those communities are huge, whatever they are. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, I really like the approach of just listing what you care about and other people who care about these things come and care with me. It's That's a really nice mm. approach. And it's a, it feels like a much more natural approach than going, I am a, a coach that works with seven figure women who are five foot four and under. It's... Um, <laughs> Shout out to the, the seven figure pocket rocket women. <laughs> 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 but yeah yeah and i think it makes like you say it makes engagement much much easier it also makes content creation much easier because you don't have to force yourself into that like specific thing it gives you a it, especially if you choose several things if you're not just saying i'm going to talk about whatever my business is and this one thing that is important to me if you give yourself a little bit more scope you then give yourself so much variety to talk about and things will come up naturally in your life and in your business that will then lend themselves to content. And so it makes content creation less stressful and horrible because there are so many people who sort of, they're like, oh, right, okay, I know I need to batch create content because it's important and it's quicker. So I'm going to sit down for uh, two hours today and do content. And they sit down and they're like, I hate it. I don't want to, I'm not inspired. I've nothing to say. I really don't want to write another dry post about why you should buy this thing from me. Whereas if you're able to pull from things that have happened in your life, like you say you sit down to do it on a Monday and over the weekend your dog did something a little bit crackers and you generally, you allow yourself to talk about your dog on your social media you can mention that. Maybe that ties into whatever service you offer or it somehow... I, I actually recently put out a post. I am now addicted to chess. I watched The Queen's Gambit. I saw that. that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I literally put out a post the other day about how social media is like chess. No, I am not kidding. I will link the post in the show notes. Um, <laughs> and, but because it was so like a different and that it wasn't a generic social media tip a generic like engage with me post mm. it got a lot of engagement and people were interested because they were like oh well, that's really weird oh now you put it that way that's yeah okay also no i don't play chess <laughs> <laughs> yeah did anyone play a game with you no no oh. Chess with me. I'm terrible at chess. You just beat me, and it would just be boring for you. <laughs> Actually, one of my best friends took pity on me and uh, offered to play with me, and so we started. A game and she said, "I don't know how the pieces move." And I said, "I think maybe either you need to learn that first, or maybe we just don't bother." <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Oh dear. So yes, what, what were we saying? Yeah, bring bring in the uh, other parts of yourself to your to your business to help you niche down. Yes, definitely, definitely good advice. Yeah, and I think also just allowing yourself to to accept that it's going to be a moving thing. Like you don't, you're not born 
with a set of interests that then stay with you throughout your entire life like you're at, at 14 I was into like take that and having an awful haircut and <laughs> now I'm well, okay maybe some things do always <laughs> carry through <laughs> <laughs> I'm still into take that <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you picked that one um but that that's what I mean, like you, your interests can change from week to week, from month to month. And it's OK to go, actually, that stuff I was talking about six months ago doesn't really interest me, not as important to me anymore. I've moved on. This is what I'm talking about at the moment. And that will probably change again. And you don't have to be you don't have to pigeon pigeonhole yourself because I don't like people pigeonholing me. So I don't. I'm not going to pigeonhole myself. Um, so I think just being ki being kind to yourself is nice, and <laughs> just just seeing what comes, seeing like and speaking like you, because that mm -hmm. is what people actually want to see. They don't care about they they do care about your business if they want to work with you, but actually most people care about the the person, the human behind the business. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And I think on that sort of evolving interests note, I think it is it is so important to let yourself evolve like that um, and to realise that there is going to be just natural ebb and flow in what you want to talk about and in what is happening in your business and in your life, because that that's just how it goes. So, you know, you might be really into a specific thing. You might be really into take that one week. <laughs> and it might inspire a it's social stick media with post. It, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but even if that social post does really well and you're still into the take that the next week, you don't have to post about it again. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can you can mix it up because you, you are a complex human being. But I think it's okay to not mold yourself but to sort of flow around those things and and share them as they naturally come up yeah just do what feels right to you mm -hmm. well i think that's a very good point to end on yes do what feels right to you <laughs> <laughs> so where can people find you talking about how you're doing things that feel right to you so you can find me. I I mainly hang out on Instagram. Um, it's it's my place at the moment. Although you can find me in other places. So Instagram, I'm at Little Green Duck Pond. You can check out um, the rest of my business and the Duck Pond at um, LittleGreenDuck.co.uk. Um, and if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn or Facebook, I'm Little Green Duck or Katie Skelton, respectively. It's quite a long list of different names, isn't it? <laughs> it is but i will put them all in the show notes so thank it doesn't you. matter just click <laughs> the link and find you <laughs> well thank you very much for being here it has been lovely thank you for having me it's been a delight a big thank you to louise who is our first patron they are supporting the show on patreon if you would like to do the same you can donate any amount you like each month on patreon um, or you can join the Social Media for Humans Club if you are a business owner, where you will get access to loads of courses and support and inspiration and bonus trainings and lots of good stuff um, if, to help you with your social media as a business. And if you do not have a business, we have a club for individuals as well. Um, which offers you some journal prompts, action steps, and things like that based on each podcast episode, um, and also some other bonus fun community stuff. So if you want to support the podcast, um, we would love to have you. If you want more regular reminders to find your own way to use social media, follow Alexis on your social platform of choice. All the links will be in the show notes. Until next time, be a human.